Alrighty here. Episode two. Not that I'm going to be able to keep track of them for much longer, but now that we've got the batteries hooked together, we've discussed the batteries and how they're 24 volts and how you can use them in the solar system and how easy they are, how much more powerful they are than store-bought lithium, how they last longer, how they're lighter, smaller. Now, let's discuss how, uh, how we're going to charge them, right? Solar panels, obviously. Solar panels are the number, everybody's going to have a solar panel. That's why you're building an off-grid solar system. But um, there's more than just solar panels. I, I often forget that, you know, there's three other main or major, more than three, but the three major ones would be, you know, the alternator from the vehicle, uh, a generator of some sort, uh, and, or uh, shore power. Um, all of which I have opted not to do myself. I spent a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of money trying to get off the grid. I don't feel the need to plug back into it. Um, but I don't have a bunch of kids and, and other things to have to worry about and I don't need that peace of mind. So uh, to each their own, that doesn't mean that you can't use all four options. Uh, that was one of the, the number one questions people ask. Hey, are these batteries, can I still charge for my alternator? Can I still use my generator? And I plug it into the shore power? Yes. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yes, there's nothing special. It's just like any other battery. If you're going to have a charger that's going to allow you to charge any other battery from shore power, it's going to have the technology to do this. If you're going to have the box or the smart sensor, whatever it's called, that uh, comes from the alternator to charge a battery, it's going to have the technology to go to 24 volts. Um, and then vice versa on the, uh, or not vice versa, but the same, same logic applies to a generator. You know, the generator is going to be producing whatever voltage I'm assuming you want. I, I don't know about generators, but if it doesn't produce 24 volts, that's a pretty shitty generator. Um, either way, all those options are, are viable. You don't need any special equipment to do it. Uh, you know, that, that, that's part of these being as easy and, and as cheap and as possible. Uh, and, and, you know, for like my dog could do it. She's back here cheerleading, but she could still do it if she wanted to. Um, Solar panels. Solar panels are often, that's a number number two question after, uh, can I charge this with my generator, which just blows my mind. You've got a solar system, but you want to use a gas-powered generator. That's another rant for another video. Solar panels, number one thing people want to know are brand names. Um, the solar panels are somewhat comparable to cell phones in 19, no, 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 no. Uh, like what iPhone did to the cell phone industry in 2008, 2009, is what a couple of brands are doing to this with the solar panel industry right now. Um, Panasonic, LG, Silfab. Uh, now this is one that I've not actually physically seen, but um, has some on, uh, online uh, ratings and some statistics and numbers that are right in, right in line with Panasonic, right in line with LG, right in line with uh, uh, Canadian Solar. Um, what puts those four or five brands above uh, is the is their efficiency and it's only we're only talking a percent and a half to three percent between those brand names and to be honest in an off-grid system where you're only going to have between two and four or five panels to total that that efficiency doesn't add up to be enough for me to care anyway it might be for somebody else but those efficiency ratings are more for large uh, residential or commercial size solar arrays when they get 20, 30, 40, 50 panels together, that 1% on each panel starts to add up. Um, I have a Panasonic and a Solar World. That's just the two brands that I ended up with, and I'll go more into that because you don't have to buy the same brand or the same wattage or the same amperage or the same size or the same brand or the same color. None of that matters in off-grid. You can buy any brand name and mix and match with any brand name, any wattage, any voltage, any amperage. It, the only thing that matters is when you come uh, start to pick out your charge controller. And I'm going to get into that in a minute. But um, every every uh, solar panel should have, or should legally should have a, a, a sticker on the back. They should look something like this. I don't know. I'm, I'm my one man camera here. I hope you guys can kind of see it. It's got the different circuits and the different ratings and whatnot there. The number one number that you need to look for is this open circuit voltage or not voltage, open circuit current, the or sometimes called the open short circuit current, it's always going to be an amp. It's going to be probably somewhere between 5 and 11 amps. That's the amp rating for your, that, that particular panel. And then you take, for every panel, you flip it around, and if you have all the same panels, then it's easy. But if you have two different brand names or whatever, they're going to be different numbers. 
and you need to add up that that amperage that short circuit current sometimes called open short circuit current it's going to be a, a, an amperage 5 to 11 sometimes 12 uh, you know depending on the brand names they're going to they'll differ but you need the total of all those amps i have five on one and the other one's like nine so i mean there's a big difference there but the solar world up there is like 9.3 I don't have that sticker, I can't show you, but um, the total is still under 20. So that's why I went with the 20 amp um, charge controller, because if you had, if I had six of these Panasonics that were all 5.83, then you do the math at six times six, 36 amps, you need a charge controller that's bigger than that number. Whatever your amps, your short circuit total is, you need to make sure your charge controller is bigger than that number, and you can go as big as you want really it's not going to hurt anything to have a bigger than you need charge controller because that only allows you to put more panels on in the future um, it's probably the only regret I have in my whole system is I went as cheap as possible and I got the 20 amp charge controller which is fine it runs everything the way I have it right now I don't have any plans to get any more panels but if I ever wanted to upgrade uh, add any more wattage at all even if it was a hundred watt panel I would have to upgrade the charge controller not a big deal but like if I bought the forty dollar or the forty amp one before, I wouldn't be having to spend another hundred and fifty dollars twice. Um, panels can be okay. Uh, mounting panels, real quick before I get into sourcing them. Uh, there's a one hundred and one million ways to to attach a panel to a school bus, to an RV, to your house, to a, a stick in the ground. Um, there's companies that have special special brackets, special feet and rails and, and bolts and L feet and all kinds of hurricane rated this and that. Um, I'm not going to recommend one over the other. I don't know what your bus or your RV or the roof looks like. I know what mine looks like um, and I'll try to put a link to the videos on my Instagram or maybe I can get one of those uploaded onto here somehow of me uh, installing those. But I wouldn't even recommend the, the, the style of rails that I ended up with. I got them for free. Um, because the guy that I ended up getting my second panel from just had a whole shop full of spare parts and panels and uh, he was just throwing stuff at me to get it out of his way but um, we'll get into that in a minute but panels you don't want to buy panels uh, excuse me online unless you know well okay there's a couple couple uh, of exceptions there there's freight shipping if you want to buy 12 or more solar panels or get a couple friends together that want to go in you can order freight shipping and have it shipped to a certain spot in your city or whatever and you have to go pick it up but it's a pallet it's a pallet of solar panels um, and it, it is quite cheap if you get to that 12 or 15 number I, I don't I think each uh, company is a little different um, so that's an, that's an extreme option uh, or the Amazon Prime does have a contract with Renogy and you can buy those hundred watt little toy panels that they have for camping and whatnot that I wouldn't recommend on any sort of residential, you know, long time living situation. Uh, and they do have their prime shipping on that. It seems like Amazon has some sort of a contract with Renogy and all their products, uh, the same way that Renogy has a contract with Home Depot. Um, that's the reason that you know of the Renogy name more probably than anything else. But yeah, I'm not going to tell you how to spend your money, but you shouldn't be spending more than 80 cents a watt on a residential size panel these in 2000 August of almost September of 2019 uh, sourcing panels is, is much easier done local um, you can get a good idea of prices and numbers and wattages and what you think you want and whatnot uh, but like I said uh, the shipping a solar panel costs just as much as it does to manufacture them I have called uh, UPS and FedEx and the DHL or whatever those other ones they're all about the same. They're, they want $140 to ship a $180 panel, and that's just not, a, I mean, it's, respectively, you know, it's a huge sheet of glass. If you think about it, it's not exactly their, their favorite type of, of package to ship. It's huge, it's awkward, it's extremely fragile. Um, so I have been telling people, that, and I'll stick to it because it seems to work every single time, but find the locus, local, uh, the closest local solar installation company that's doing residential and just go there. Have some cash in hand, know that you're not wanting to pay more than 80 cents a watt, and just show up and be like, you guys got any uh, surplus extra panels, you know, single panels that were extra lying around? And I won't guarantee anything, never say never, never guarantee anything in life, but they will be throwing panels at you. What happens is 
when when a system gets engineered, when a customer calls a solar company and says, I want to put solar panels on my roof, everybody springs into action and like four or five different people get involved. There's an engineer and a solar engineer and an electrical engineer and then the electrician and then the solar installer. There's a whole bunch of people that get involved in, in making this uh, computerized solar system before anybody actually orders anything and starts physically installing. What happens is the engineer likes to cover his ass and the, and the installer likes to cover his ass and the uh, 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 supplier likes to cover his ass. So they all tack on an extra 50 watts at, at, on, on the whole system and by the time they've all done that you've, you've got an extra 400 watts on, on, the, on the end of the bill and then when they go to physically put all those panels up on the roof they don't fit obviously so they're left with one or two extra panels. Happens all the time. Shh, don't tell anybody. But what it does is create a, a, a huge pile of surplus individual panels that are mixed matched and they can't use them. That you know, you'd think, okay, uh, extra panel, put it on the next house. Well, it's not always that easy because every solar, uh, residential solar, has all the regulations that off grid doesn't. So they have to be the same uh, brand name, the same wattage, the same amperage, the same color, the same size. You know, some homeowners associations requires certain patterns and whatnot. So it's not as easy for them to just take those extra and use them at the next job because there's all kinds of certifications and stuff that they have to follow. So anyway, uh, it creates these piles of random panels. I went to the place, the first one I even went to nearest me, the guy like just, his eyes lit up. And he thought that I wanted more than one. <laughs> I already had one, but he kind of got disappointed that I only wanted one panel. But for $100, I got a 285 watt Solar World all the railings for both panels, all the feet for both panels, all the uh, connectors and bolts for the like hurricane rated freaking rails that are up there. I used them because they were free and that's what I had. i not not recommending them, but they're, they're way overkill. If you look at some of the pictures, they're like six inches up off the actual roof and they're not going to blow off or anything. Hell, if a hurricane came, it, it sardine canned the top of the bus off before the solar panels were coming off individually. So I, it gives you peace of mind, but it's also, I'm going to have to, you know, windbreak and whatnot driving around is, is not it, the ideal thing to have to worry about when you're driving around. Okay, so solar panels, we covered alternator, we covered shore power, we covered generator. I don't have any examples of that, I'm sorry, I, I just don't. <laughs> um, but the one thing that I wanted to do, because we will, we, we could go, what I have in the cab cupboard right now, powering everything, you hear the air conditioner back there, um, is, is this same setup. I have six cells or six modules. Um, I just took them apart so that I could make these videos and show you and whatnot. So here, I'm going to grab the, the camera and I'm going to show you the inside and how they're connected and where the wires from my uh, inverter and where the wires from, from the uh, charge controller are coming from so you can get an idea of what it actually looks like because that's the, that's the money in all these videos. Is, Everybody sits here for 20 minutes while I talk about nothing and then I show you the thing at the end of the video that everybody wants to see, right? Am I doing YouTube? Am I doing this right? <laughs> so in here you're going to, I'm going to, before I pick up the camera, in, in, in the cupboard cabinet here is these upright and the, and the uh, charge controller and the uh, inverter are going to be both connected to the same terminal. I'm just describing that because it's kind of dark in there and I guess I could turn the flash on or something or open up a window. but. I've got things blocked off to keep, let the uh, air conditioner do its thing. So anyway, I'm going to show you the connections, and then you'll see that, and that's that's basically what I wanted to show you. We went over the ways of charging. Um, I don't want to get into specifics on the charge controller yet, uh, and what it takes to, and which ones you need, and which options you need for this. That'll be the next video, I guess. I just wanted to go over charging options. So I think we've covered that. What to look for on the panels, what to look, how to rate it. I'm going to go more over the, the pairing and charge controller in the next video, but I'll grab the, the camera here and then go on down to the magic happening down here. Okay, so uh, like I said, we, we went from here, same thing that's down here. Now, these big 2 watt cables, those are my inverter connections. These L terminals or lugs make it really easy. Same style of lug, just a uh, for a much, much smaller wire. These are my charge controller. These two wires are charge controller. These two wires are inverter. And that's what's powering my air conditioner right now. Has been for the last two hours, or hour and a half, whatever it's been, but that's what I had for the first six months. I only added three more modules just so I could 
have a party at two o'clock in the morning if I wanted. Anyway, I forgot to mention where to get these in my last video. I kept saying Tech Direct, but Tech Direct is the company. Tech Direct uh, Club. If you tech, uh, Google Tech Direct Club, you'll find them. Um, they've got an eBay store and a, a website, but they are specialized in in these in needs uh, leaf modules, and they well free shipping right now. Oh, my code. I keep forgetting about the code. I have a code. I'm sort of an affiliate of them. Um, Dortoka, just like in my name, D-O-R-T-O-K-A. On checkout, it'll save you 5%. Doesn't sound like much, but when you buy a couple hundred dollars worth of batteries, it adds up pretty quick. Anyway, there's the connections. Till next time.